Ok. The most important single thing that governments can do is to get the market to tell the truth. The market does many things well. One of the things it does not do well is including indirect costs. For example, we burn a gallon of gasoline, we buy a gallon of gasoline. We pay the cost of getting the oil out of the ground, getting it to a refinery, refining in the gasoline, getting the gasoline to the local service station. We do not pay the costs of treating respiratory illnesses for breathing the polluted air. We do not pay the cost of damage from acid rain, and certainly not the cost of climate change. When Sir Nicholas Stern, former chief economist of the World Bank, was asked by the UK government to do um, a study on the future costs of climate change, he pointed out when that study was released that climate change is a result of a massive market failure. And by that he meant that because in the past we've not included the cost of climate change in the price of coal-fired electricity or the price of gasoline, that now the next generation is faced with huge costs of dealing with climate change, rising sea level, more destructive storms, higher temperatures, more heat waves, crop failures, the, the entire complex of issues, the melting glaciers in Asia that sustain the major rivers during the dry season and so forth. Um, so what we need to do is to get the market to tell the truth. We need to include these indirect costs, and we have some sense of what they are now. And we do it by reducing income taxes and raising carbon taxes. We don't change the amount of tax we pay. You and I pay the same amount of tax but we lower income taxes and then offset that with a rise in carbon taxes and do it over a period of 10 or 12 years so it's, it's gradual and, and so people know what's coming and can plan accordingly. Um, so that's the most important thing. Some prefer the cap and trade approach where you put a limit on carbon emissions and then, and then auction off the, the rights to, to emit carbon. That's what Europe has been trying to do. It's not been very successful, and Europe's been at it for a few years now. Most economists would, would argue for restructuring the tax system as the most efficient way to restructure the global economy and to get the market to tell the environmental truth. As I travel around the world, I, I'm often asking um, uh, the question, um, what, what can I do? What should I do? And I think people expect me to say, well, you know, recycle your newspapers and change your light bulbs to the more efficient ones and so forth. And those things are important. But we're now faced with the need to ch change the system, that is to restructure the global economy, to get the market, to tell the environmental truth. Um, and, and that means becoming politically active, every one of us. For decades now, as environmentalists, we've talked about saving the planet. What we're now talking about is saving civilization itself because the mounting stresses in the world, peak oil, soaring oil prices, food shortages, uh, water shortages, and all the other environmental stresses associated with climate change, um, threaten to increase the number of failing states to the point where our global civilization itself begins to unravel, to the point where problems become unmanageable for the international system. Um, so this, this is why, or let me put it another way, saving civilization is not a spectator sport. It's not something we can sit back and hope someone else is going to take, going to take care of. We all have a stake in it. Almost all of us have children or grandchildren. And, and we need to, uh, to think about what we need to do and how quickly we need to do it um, if we're going to, to save civilization. I mean, for a long time now, we've been talking about the need for sustainable development. The alternative to sustainable development is unsustainable development, that is economic decline and collapse. And as we go back and look at earlier civilizations, we can see, in retrospect, 
the nature of the environmental problems that many of them ran into that they were not able to deal with. Um, for the Sumerians, for example, was rising salt levels in the soil. Um, we knew that they had some sense of the problem because they shifted from wheat to barley, barley being more salt tolerant. So when wheat yields went down, they shifted to barley, but eventually as salt yields continued to, salt concentrations continued to rise in the soil, then barley yields went down too, and so did the civilization. With the Mayans, it was soil erosion, um, and um, partly the result of deforestation and the intensification of agriculture. And as, as their food system began to decline, so did their civilization, and it eventually collapsed. It's all jungle now. And the area where the Sumerian civilization was in, in, in what is now southern Iraq is, is, is wasteland. It's desert. I mean, it's beyond uh, the boundaries of, of cultivation today. Um, so we, we know from experience that earlier civilizations, when they got into environmental trouble, um, often were not able to cope with those problems, and it eventually led to their decline. Beppe, I want to thank you for your interest in and support of environmental issues. I want to remind you that beginning of 2006, when we released Plan B 2.0, you carried a brief excerpt from it, 400, 500 words on your blog. It created so much traffic to our website that our website collapsed and we had to increase its capacity by a factor of 10. I mean, it was extraordinary that this would happen from a blog outside the United States. And then we began to do some research and we learned that your blog is one of the most powerful blogs in the world. I mean, the idea that an individual can compete with major news organizations like the BBC and CNN and so forth is, is just beyond um, uh, one's imagination. Uh, so I, I commend you on putting together this extraordinary, extraordinarily effective way of raising uh, public awareness in the world, and we're delighted to be working with you. I mean, together, I think we can turn things around, but we don't have much time. We're going to have to move fast, and we're going to have to involve everyone, um, everyone possible in this in this effort. And I congratulate you. On, on, on what you're doing. Thanks so much.